Hi channel, welcome back to Prepared. Um, today I'm doing another sort of touch and go uh, video where I try and uh, break the tires of my uh, my Skyline. Oh, that's a weird freeze because it's just started recording. Uh, we are in a location that I have talked about before. Um, one of my favorite airports from Orbex, at least sort of, at least it used to be. Uh, it still is. Um, it's kind of odd and weird and different and I feel like I'm really in a I feel like I'm there whenever I'm here and it is the lovely town of lonely town and airport of let's see if we can show it to you Bonners Ferry Bonners Ferry is, uh, 6-5 Sierra call sign it's a, a cool little town. It's set in uh, the Rockies. Here it is. K uh, Kilo 65 Sierra. It's really close to Canada. Um, it's uh, in Idaho, I guess, or whatever it's uh, called. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to do touch and goes up here and see if we can get the tires to break. It's a, I love, love doing touch and goes here. Uh, I one thing though that I have to admit that I have never really looked into is the traffic pattern. I think this means that we have to do a right traffic pattern and I've always done left traffic patterns which is kind of funny because when you do and you come into land you hit this hill right here I bet coming around the other way will be easier. Let's check the charts and see if I'm right. No, it is a left track pattern. Okay. Oh. Well, so we'll fly patterns like so. If we are, uh, if that's the weather, anyways. Um. Yeah. I'll try and be a little faster with setting everything up today. Um, uh, you know what, I might even just auto start this. You've seen me start this, I know how to start it properly, but today it's mostly about doing patterns, so let's do some patterns. One or two. Kilo 6 5 Sierra Airport Information Charlie 2 1 5 0 Zulu Weather Wind 3 4 6 and 5 okay. Visibility 1 0 Sky Condition Few Clouds at 2000 Ceiling 2700 Broken Ceiling 4000 Overcast Temperature 4 Dew Point 2 Altimeter 3 0 0 7 Advise on Initial Contact You have Information Charlie Kilo 6 5 Sierra Airport Information Charlie 2 1 5 0 Zulu Weather Wind 3 4 6 at 5 Visibility 1 0 Sky Condition Few Clouds at 2000 Ceiling 2700 Broken Ceiling 4000 Overcast Temperature 4 Dew Point 2 Altimeter 3 0 0 7 Advise on Initial Okay, so we have about 2000 over here just going to be about the cloud level here. Another thing that I wanted to demonstrate in this video is also something I've talked about before and it is basically frame rate. So I am running the GTX uh, 1070 from Nvidia and it's really 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 good. I love this, um, this, this card. I think what I'll do though just to show you what's going on is I'll show you my settings. Um, I have a fairly old CPU. It's not that fast. It's a um, Oh my god, I even forget. It's uh Oh, it's an i7. Man. Sometimes my brain really blanks out. I wonder if I have like some sort of mental illness. Anyways. Uh it's an older older CPU. It's not yeah, it's a 3700K that I've overclocked to about 4.4 gigahertz, which does okay. But um I have a GTX 1070 and what it basically has enabled me to do is run quite decent settings. I'm running um, four times multi sampling here but I'm also in NVIDIA Spectre. I have sparse grid super sampling set up. 
However, when it's cloudy like this, that makes it, that really hurts the frame rate as you just saw. I'll show you how this works later. I'll just show you my other settings. I'm running a level of detail radius at high. I feel like that really, really helps when I go faster and in more dense areas. Like if I'm going over New York or urban areas, this thing is what you need. This thing helps you maintain that 30 frames per second. Tessellation factor seems to have no effect on my uh, GPU anymore. My old GPU I had to keep this at minimum and that made the terrain sort of change visibly as I was flying over it. Water detail, I'm like ultra now. I can probably move that down. It doesn't really make a big difference but I really like um, the waves around the boats. Uh, I'm a big fan of the ships as you may have seen if you watch my channel. Mesh resolution, 5 meters because Orbex recommends it. Texture resolution, 7 centimeters makes a difference. Scenery complexity, very dense. This does make a difference on my computer. I could turn this down and get some more frames, but it really does hurt the scenery. Um, autogen, vegetation, and building. I have to dense both of them. Vegetation I can technically set up a bit more, but I, I don't think it really adds that much buildings that do think adds much but that does hurt my frames. Special effect details high and special effect distance medium. I don't know if it really hurts my settings too much but I've been experimenting this forever and I don't know, I, I, this is fine. Uh, for reflections I turned off the clouds and the sim objects um, but I have these vehicle, terrain, vegetation and buildings on. Uh, for the water. Um, the HDR lighting I have it slightly up based on the, this is the recommendations for the ultimate shader realism pack that I have and I have dynamic reflections to medium. I could try turning on that out. Um, this does affect me ever so slightly. This used to affect me a lot and this is the big thing about the 1070. I can adjust this all the way up. Shadow quality does um, in certain settings change uh, my GPU load. So. Um, but I, I can have terrain shadows on, I can turn them on, that does help um, in certain cases when the GPU is overloaded. But the cloud shadows I can have all the way up, the object shadows I can have all the way up and have everything on to cast and receive. And that does not seem to really make much of a difference anymore. The terrain shadows and the quality of the shadows makes a difference however. Um, the dynamic reflections I haven't really seen anything happen with. Weather, cloud distance I have it set to 80. Uh, and then I think uh, they'll have visibility in active sky set to 110 and 100, something like this. Volumetric fog is on, that also defects my frames. I have all of this set to 0, 40 for road vehicles, ships, and ferries, and leash boats set to 0. I just hate how they, the paths that they take, that's so, they just go in circles, I don't like them. But yeah, the airline, uh, I sometimes I put the general aviation on. Um, in this case, it would be actually kind of nice because there are, is some pretty decent traffic on this airport. Um, but I'm not going to touch it because it's going to just reload everything. That's it. For all the other settings, I kind of have very normal, normal things on. I have uh, for realism, everything on. Yeah, whatever. You get it. But anyways, so let me just show you again what we're dealing with it. So my frames right now are not reaching 30 frames per second and it's because of these clouds. If The reason why I know that it's because of the clouds is if I start something like uh, I have GPU-C, which is like a, a little GPU monitoring tool, you can see my GPU load is at 99%. This is how you know if you are if your frame rate is limited by your GPU or your CPU. So for me right now, I the reason why I'm not getting to 30 is because my GPU is overloaded. The reason why it's overloaded is because of the AA. So one thing I could do is I could go into NVIDIA Expector, turn off the enhancing of the AA, the super sparse, the super sparse uh, blah 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 and that works very well but that means that I have to restart my sim and sometimes you don't want to do that because you're in the middle of a flight so what I do is I go in here and I just adjust it here I adjust the in sim setting of the AA and that changes 
this a little bit. So if you see, we remember we were at 99. See, now we're down at 88. That's all it takes for me. So I'm pretty much on the line. You can see here in the graph too, you can see it. Uh, I wish I could make this bigger. Maybe I can somehow. But you can see it change from the here all the way overloaded to here not overloaded. And you can see now the frames are pretty much up to 30 frames per second. So that's how I do it. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, I can also just turn off the terrain shadows. And uh, yeah, and you'll see it goes down even a little bit more. Now we're down at 80%. But I like the terrain shadows. <laughs> I've become really. I've become attached to the terrain shadows. Um, and we have, and this is the thing, like since my CPU isn't really, my CPU is hardly able to deliver more frames than this um, in any aircraft or in some settings it is, but my CPU really isn't. So I am, most of the time I'm CPU bound, so what I want to do is I'll kind of want to load out my GPU as much as possible without overloading it. And that way I'll get the best image quality with uh, my my locked 30 frames. The reason why I'm locking 30 frames too is because it helps with the stutters. I have a series of videos on my channel with it's called the Orbex uh, OpenLC US prequel tour and I flew it was kind of when I was trying to learn how to do the recording and make that um, yeah figure out how to record basically and record in a decent quality and what I what my biggest issue was that I had so many um, so many stutters and the main thing that helped was was this to lock the frame rate that did help with the stutters the second thing that helped was the level of detail radius because my CPU just can't load the scenery fast enough and then the same stutters anyways enough of AI talk you can see the difference though can't you or I don't know if you guys are looking at this at 100% on a 1440p monitor but if you are you can see some shimmering here and here and here, especially if I twist my head like this, yeah. Anyway, but it does help though. That's that's a pretty sort of qu quick way of of fixing the the AI. So, um, anyways, we are here and we are here to test out these tires that are about to fail that I want to see fail. Anyways, I we're doing this by doing uh, some pattern work and. Um, Let's just get to it. So the wind's coming in from the north, so we'll taxi down to the south and we'll take off a uh, runway. I think it's runway 0 2 or something, I don't remember exactly. Ah, I'm, still, I'm still having some issue with the frames here, I'm not, if you can see, can't you? So I think what I'll do, let's see if it's the GPU. It's actually not the GPU. this even a bit more but I could take it to none basically to get ready for some shimmers and I'm gonna take this down to I'm gonna keep it on, on ultra but I will take off the terrain shadows see I'm still getting not the best frames, but they do seem a little bit more stable. Let's see how this goes. I'm 
I'm thinking about getting a 4K TV, a massive 65 inch 4K TV, and using that as my SIM screen. I heard it's about the same width as the windshield of a um, Cessna 102. Uh, so let's see. Round me two. Boundary County traffic, Cessna, November 9095, Charlie Sierra, taking off runway two, touch and go, left traffic, Boundary County. So, when flying patterns, there's one thing that really really helps and that is setting the heading bug to the to the direction of the runway. Let's see if we can so cool, isn't it? They have the charts. Uh, there's not a lot of charts here. Just want to get the actual runway heading. Zero zero eight. That doesn't seem right at all. Anyways, I'll just keep it where it is. It's roughly the right heading that we want to go. Let me turn on the fuel pump, landing lights. Turn off the beacon. And we will take off and do our first uh, first pack like. See, my frames are down at the 20s. Knots. Little bit of wind coming from the left. You can see the smoke moving with the wind, which is very nice. So I'm heading down the runway heading, as you can see, but I'm still heading for the heading bug. Uh, I can take a look behind. You see I'm being pushed over by the wind, so, but that's okay. Uh, we get to 3,000 feet, we'll make a left-hand turn. We'll do a standard right turn using the turn right indicator. And... Just try and stay at 3,000 feet. This is what I'm really bad at, is staying at keeping altitude through turns. I'm bringing the heading bug on my HSI to my 3 o'clock as my standard rate indicator is indicating I'm doing a standard turn. I am leveling out. Come off the power a little bit. A lot, actually. See, this is it's such a beautiful location. It's so cool when you take off. It just looks totally different. I don't know. There's something about this place. It looks different than the rest of the sim world to me. I'll do another standard right turn at this point. Time, we're going to align the heading bug with our 6 o'clock. Going downwind. I'm 
I actually should do is I should align the whole needle. It makes it a lot easier. Feel this to my left. The wind is coming, and I'll set the heading and the indicator to indicate where I'm coming from, basically, or where the wind is coming from. It's coming from the left, so. beam the numbers and I just watched on the glide slope and like he said very very explained very well I think I'm a little far from the airport but the airfield but um, basically you start your turn of base when you're when you have the airport roughly at sort of 45 degrees to your uh, to your rear we're getting there but I think we're a little too far out too so I think in that case, since we should be a little further out still. I I wanted this I I'm gonna actually turn down the anti aliasing on a little bit again. Just to stop the shimmering. It's very disturbing. With absolutely no AA is not really a good solution. The standard AA isn't that ba half bad though, I think anymore. It's it's better. He says as things start to stutter like a nightmare. Look at that, it's just completely... What's going on? What's going on prepared? Okay. At this point we're returning base. Um, To make our landing checks, so, uh, fuel pumps, landing light, text light, everything's still on here. Actually, it should turn on the strobe. Um, standard rate turn. 90 degrees. Isn't that just pretty? I love how the city too is situated sort of like down in a gully behind this, behind the, the airport. I really like Bonner's Ferry. It's not getting a lot of, I don't know, I'll never see people flying out of this place on uh, YouTube and I think it's, that's too bad because it's really, really cool. It's such a neat little airport. It's my favorite place to go and do patterns. Maybe because the terrain around it is so well, it works well for, for patterns, um, but it also, it's just interesting. Uh, so passed it. Uh, typical. The tighter pattern next time. Let's see if I can. Do a little better. talking about the traffic it made me want to turn on traffic but uh, I don't think I can really with this frame rate the way it is I think it's the weather I think it, maybe it's active sky or something I'm not sure 500 it's also what I love I love them at the highway cuts through the terrain like this and you have the little embankment or berm going up the I think that's really realistic that's I don't see that a whole lot of places yeah okay I need to pay attention to my flying which I'm not <laughs> need to 
pay more attention to your flying address. Yes, I do. This is not the way you do it. Uh, I'm slow, but I'm... Uh, so you can see here now the wind coming in from the left. Oh, this is gonna be a tiny bit of crab. Wait. Oh, man, I overcorrect the flare a lot in crosswind situations. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not good. That was shameful. I've talked about this plane before and how like it seems maybe easy, but I don't know. I don't. It's sometimes it's really not. I think maybe it's because I have it's fully loaded. Pretty much, it's a little different. It's a kind of a different animal to fly at that point. It doesn't. It it will float and then all of a sudden it won't anymore. But I don't know. Almost it's a fun plane to fly. I think. I like it. Backtrack there because I messed up in a big way. But we'll do it again. It's actually pretty strong. Crosswinds are not are actually a little stronger than than I th thought. I don't know, or it's gusting or something. I don't know. This isn't good. Should we check? Kilo six five Sierra Airport information Delta two one five zero Zulu weather wind three four six at five visibility one zero sky condition. Few clouds at 2,000, ceiling 2. Oh, only 5 knots. I think we'll climb to like 3,500 this time. Get a bit more of a... bit more of a glide going on the approach. And we'll keep the pattern a little bit tighter. That's better. It's 
over halfway up the strut. I'm going down this way. That seems pretty good. I'm a little high if I want to be at 3500, but it's not so bad. And yeah, we've already beamed the numbers. To, like trim my cameras because I have too many cameras and they're all just annoying. Most of them are. But yeah, huh? How's that landscape? It's pretty cool. It's different than this Mississippi crap we're flying through. And I say crap not to disrespect Mississippi, but like in the sim, it's just not as visually interesting as as the Northwest, is it? it just isn't. Okay, 3,500 knots. Uh, we have the airport more or less at our at our 45 degree angle behind us. We will come around. I'll try and trim it for a nice descent. Do a 90 degree turn and we'll do another 90 degree turn like almost immediately after the first one. But we will, I will level out between the two, especially since I'm going a little slower on my base leg than I was on my crossing. Just about just leveled out. Turned it again. Yeah, we did. A little less than last time, but we did. It's probably. I think it's the wind. The wind is pushing us. Uh, the wind is coming in from here. And it's pushing us this way. So. Eighty knots. And can bring up flaps. stable approach going this time. It's easier with two notches of flaps, but right now I'm just I'm, I want to try it with one again because that was shameful. That last one. It's a, it's a good, it's a good speed for the, the final, but I need to be a little careful because it's close to stall speed with this type of weight. Adding power here, adjusting, adjusting. Wind's not so much of a problem anymore. I'll be careful not to over flare like I did in the last one. See that? much better. I would say that's kind of how you do it. Okay, I will just take off again. Love how this thing climbs. It's pretty, pretty good climber. Almost a thousand feet per minute, and we're fully loaded. 
and we're at some altitude too. It's 3000, I think we'll start our turn. I think what we'll do at this point, we'll add like, why don't we add like five seconds between uh, the turns? And then we'll add no seconds on uh, the base leg. What I mean by that is we've done a 90 degree turn. Level out, and that will be one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi. Okay, and we'll do a second turn. And level out. We're doing around a hundred, so we'll try and do a hundred to go on the other way too. So we'll have a a reference point. We've leveled off, we're at 3,500 feet. We'll end the turn and we'll come back on the power a bit more. So make sure we don't climb. Oh, come on. Okay, that's it. Going down, I'm going downwind. At around a hundred knots, we'll try and keep that speed. So just this, I don't know, it wants to climb at this point. So we added 8 seconds going this direction on the crosswind leg and the question now is if the wind has pushed us 8 seconds back by the time we make our um, turn to final, our, our base leg turn basically, go on. Ugh, that's losing altitude, it's being a little difficult to control. Could also be that this this indicator is actually could be slightly off, which I think it probably is. But anyway, let's let's go for this. Let's reduce the power, trim to about a hundred, and we'll do a standard rate turn. We'll do no pause in between. We'll just turn. You can feel the aircraft being pushed around, though, can't you? It's, you can see it sort of skidding over the landscape instead of cutting in. It's being pushed by the wind almost outwards. You can, you can kind of, you can see it. It's a lot of descent that I have going on right now. Too much. See, even with eight seconds of added time, we over we overturned. Okay, I think this will be my last landing for tonight. I will see if the tires hold out or not. I think they will. This time, though, what we'll do is we'll do a we'll add two knot twenty degrees of flaps. We'll see the difference that makes. That makes quite a big difference. See the oak now too, so you can see all the mistakes I'm making. Five hundred. So what I'm do I'm doing is I'm adjusting the the, the trim and 
the speed. I don't want it to go this slow. So you have to add some power and pitch and trim forward a little bit. And then you'll get a decent, a good looking descent like this. This looks pretty good. Um, it will behave quite differently now in the flare. It's a little bit more predictable and less sort of, I don't know, it's a little ah, nicer, easier to land basically with only one notch of flaps it feels maybe that's it's a little easier for it to react than, than it is now. It's a little slower, it wants to stop once you come off the power, it sort of stops it and that kind of automatically helps you put it down. So we're over the numbers. I'm coming out from the power, just floating. You can see it. That's much easier, right? I just came off the power and let it flow down to the ground. See, that was a nice landing. That was kind of fun. We went from the worst landing to a decent landing to a good landing. And uh, notice how, uh, I really do mean it, it's the, the flaps, man, that makes a big difference. That, um, that extra notch of flaps just makes this so much easier to fly and land. Well, no failures yet though. I've been thinking though that this is I, I do wanna just keep flying this the skyline until and just watch everything fail on it. Um, um I don't know, like Frugal Pete from Frugal Sim talked about doing it, but of course he, like always, Frugal, I'm calling you out. You, you want to do things, and you say you're gonna do things, and then you don't do them. Um, the only thing, <laughs> like, like uh, that's you, that's just the case. You you said you wanted to make a series about the A2A and watch things fail. You made like two videos and you were done. Um, I think I'll do this with this with this series or this plane. I will. Um, keep flying it until things fail. Um, that was not today, as you can see, but you know, maybe next time. Maybe next time it will fail. These tires have to fail sometime, at least according to um, According to the AccuSim maintenance mo module, not great so far though. But what do you know? Someday. Let's see, ah, it's not so cool. I don't know when this happened, but I, I, I have to say I just noticed it recently. The, the smokestacks does they do change with the wind direction. I'm not sure if it's um, Orbex or if it's um, prepared or what 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 it is that made it so. But it has happened. Another thing that I've noticed, and I guess I am seeing it here too. Orbex are putting in speed trees in their sceneries, aren't they? Yes, they are. I've seen it in Skagit, and now I'm seeing it here. These are speed trees. And they move with the wind. Pretty neat. Pretty, pretty neat. Uh, I've seen it at two airports now at this point, and maybe maybe there's more. See, here's another one. I think I've seen that Bar Harbor as well. Actually, I could be mistaken, but I, I think I have. It's a nice, it's a nice airport. Nice scenery. It is really, really, really cool. You, you do feel like you're in Idaho. Not 
not that I've been there, but I imagine that the sort of be a little bit like this, like expansive, open, majestic, rural. I, I, yeah, I have a feeling it ain't that fancy. It's just, you know. Also, another thing I really like about the scenery is I really love the. Um, I love the, um, the taxi bay textures. They shine if it's sunny. Um, before I go, I want to do one more. Um, one experiment. And I wanted to do it with the weather. Just see what the difference is in frame rate. And as you can see, it's quite significant. If we can even go back to four samples here, I think, and probably turn the train shows back on, and we're still locked at 30. Uh, those those clouds, they really, really hurt. They really hurt the performance of the sim. <sighs> With the uh, AA. Five cloud layers set on, not four, one less than default. Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, you can feel free to leave a leave a like or a comment, or subscribe even. That's really cool when you guys subscribe. That's um, it's fun. It's fun for me. Um, I've been thinking about getting onto Twitch recently, so. People could like interact with me while I'm streaming or flying, but um, it won't happen just yet. Look how nice it looks with the sun out. I love the I love the shader tweaks, man. They made a world difference to to the simulator. Like what a different place it is now compared to with the um, the clouds up there. And it's all be I, mostly it's because of the shaders. Look at look at what it does to this place. It just totally changes the atmosphere and bathes things in light and you get these long beautiful shadows and what a difference that the shaders have made look at that it looks great anyways if you like what you see subscribe leave a like leave a comment um, things like that and I'll be back with more videos and maybe next time the wheels will fail okay bye bye